Hello, this is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. Today we're talking about the advantages of having a health coach on your team, on chronic illness and the overlooked hacks that are helping you rebuild your health. About me, Martin Patella here. Um, I have been a health coach for about well, maybe 10, 15 years. Uh, well, no longer. Certified metabolic typing advisor since 2011. Previously, I was uh, certified as a clinical hypnotherapist. I worked in that field for a little while, but ended up doing management consulting um, for its own reasons. I spent 20, 20 years in the computer industry management consulting, information technology. I train people in the use of software, highly complex technical software. Uh, in fact, I'm by education, I have a, a university education in uh, computer science and business administration. And I worked in the field as a business consultant. In fact, that came very handy because I, uh, I became very health challenged. My problem, much like many other people who work in the alternative health field, they start with a problem. My problem was mercury toxicity. I got 12 mercury amalgam fillings from a dentist and that precipitated a very serious health problem. My genetics are such that I don't detoxify very efficiently, so my my uh, situation worsened fairly quickly. It's that sort of, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Well, in my case, it, it was pretty rough. I, I've spent at least 15 years in pretty rough shape. But eventually, uh, first I tried to get help from the mainstream, you know, the uh, the medical field. I went to the uh, orthopedic surgeon because my problems were collapsing arches in my feet, plantar fasciitis, and I had carpal tunnel syndrome, so my wrists were hurting, and then my back started going. So anyway, the orthopedic surgeon injected me with a cortisone shot and uh, said, well, that's all I have. Well, six weeks later, the uh, effect wore off, and I was back to being worse than before. I saw sought help from chiropractor, um, very good, well-meaning, well-educated, highly skilled people. I, I saw many in my life. I may have spent, oh, I don't know, several, several tens of thousands of dollars in chiropractic offices um, over my office, um, over my life. And um, definitely uh, helps it, it was treating my symptoms, but it was not getting me better. It was just helping me cope. And that seems to be the model for both the um, allopathic, the mainstream medical, or even the uh, alternative is treat the symptoms, create a, a patient relationship, and then just repeat, keep it going. It's about creating a practice and having an income stream more than healing the person and uh, having them free of their health problems. That's why you see the words root cause resolution on the screen. Um, functional medicine practitioners do that. They seek the root cause resolution, fixing that which caused the problem. I eventually got certified as metabolic typing advisor, and uh, that's one of those disciplines where we understand how food and diet and nutrition is uh, intersecting with the genetics of a given person. There are differences. There are individual differences, and if we don't take those in account, we end up not being able to get to a happy out, uh, outcome. I've been doing that for well, since 2011. So uh, let's, let's get to the core of this. What are the important things we must do to regain and maintain optimal health? As a coach, I, yeah, I've talked to maybe, well, several thousand people, I'm sure. 
And uh, I, I see some patterns. I see some tendencies. First of all, uh, most of us are oriented toward new instead of toward tried and true. Instead of turning to the basics that everybody should be doing, we are trying to say, well, what's new? What's, what's different? And we are naturally um, oriented towards that. Like we always are supposed to be looking out for something that's changed because it could be dangerous. Um, also, our natural bias, I've already hit on that, uh, the mainstream medical and most allopathic and even alternative health practitioners, they practice symptom-oriented treatments. They, uh, if you tell them I have a headache, they'll tell you I have a pill for the headache instead of asking, well, what is the cause of your headache? And that's the, um, well, I find it in the whole society, really. You know, we're, we're trying to solve the drug problem by, by trying to suppress the drug dealers or the drug users instead of asking what's in our society that's giving us so many people who are emotionally so desperate and destitute that they want to numb themselves with drugs that help them not feel anything. And then there's the easy button. Easy button. The promise is that uh, uh, if, if there is the easy button, the pill, the something, we want it done for us. We want to be um, not having to do the hard work. We want to hand the problem to somebody else and have them solve it for us, which is what we have here. The normal response is, do it for me. I speak to a lot of people who come with a problem and say, well, just fix it for me. They want to hand over their body and their life to me as if it were an automobile driven over to a um, repair shop and say, well, fix it and then return it back to me. And then they want to go back to the way things were without having to change anything. The make it free seduction is that the advertising online especially, has made it look as if information were free or as if uh, education were free or as if uh, um, anything that's of informational nature would be free. That's an illusion. Nothing's really free. Somebody had to work to create it. Even, even the television programs that you're watching, uh, they're exchanging you, the customer who's watching the program, with the advertiser. The advertiser pays the channel to show you the advertisements in the hopes that you're going to do what the advertisements are trying to induce you to do. It's not free. Your attention is the uh, commodity in this exchange. And the last bit that I run into a lot is that uh, people are induced to demand certifications. What is the uh, what is the body that has licensed you, or how have you certified yourself to be able to tell me what what you're telling me and why? And and that's that's primarily um, caused or created by the dominant industries. They are creating barriers to entry into others. You know, the medical industry, the uh, medical association makes it difficult or has even gone to the, uh, to the end to uh, get the politicians to grant them the exclusive license to practice medicine. These days, for example, I cannot say in public that I can treat or prevent or make better any medical condition. I can talk about symptoms, but I cannot name a name. Like, for example, I cannot tell you that I can uh, cure your hypertension or that I can prevent you getting cancer. That would be outside of what I'm licensed or I'm not licensed to say. Only a doctor could say that. And then the FDA enforces the uh, statements about products. So you cannot say that a product will make you, um, I don't know, 
heal heal your cancer because uh, that would turn it into the drug into a drug and the term drug is reserved in this commercial space only two things that have been certified by the FDA and they require a uh, large study, phase one, phase two, phase three, spend 200 plus million dollars getting to a place where you actually have this proof. So how does this work really, right? When you ask for do it for me, I can't. It's that the problems that we're discussing with are caused by your behavior. It's your nutritional habits, the foods you eat, the exercise you do or don't do, the, uh, all of the natural behavior that's related to f food, air, water, exercise, all of that. It's up to you. It's not up to me. I cannot do it for you. You'll have to, to make change. And so, so this is where we get the, if you're going to do what you've always done, you're going to be getting what you've always got. To, to, to make it free, well, um, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Somebody has to pay for it. Normally, it's the consumer who's hiring the service that ends up paying for it. Um, I'm able to give this away for free in the hopes that you will come to our store and shop in our store. And, uh, and I hope that you'll understand how and why that is and why I will, at the end, I'll be explaining to you that there are products that you can buy that will help you with your health, that will make you healthier. And it's not that I'm going to be making a claim that products such and such will heal or prevent or improve any medical condition. That, that, that's not how it works. What we work on is we uh, remove blocking factors or we support health factors. Your body does the healing. I heal nothing. Your body does it all. And the demand for certifications? Well, um, Think about it. Natural foods are, should not be required to be certified the same way as toxic drugs. These are not poisons. And yet, I cannot tell you that cherries or black cherry juice prevents high blood pressure even, even if it does. Or I cannot tell you that apples or the acid, the malic acid that's in apples, helps to dissolve gallstones and an apple a day will indeed keep your um, um, gallbladder healthier than it would be otherwise. But the example I wanted to raise is the double blind. The double blind study, the such touted wonderful invention of the medical mainstream, um, the result of it will be skewed by the statistical distribution of the biological individuality of the subjects. I know from metabolic typing that, for example, a um, fast oxidizer will react in a completely opposite way to a specific nutrient compared to a um, parasympathetic or better yet sympathetic dominant person. We have these four major dominances and each one of us has some, and we react different, differently. If I give um, potassium to one person, it's going to lower their blood pressure, and if I give it to another, it's going to raise it. Go figure. So therefore, this double-blind study is oftentimes just a nonsense. So how do I see myself? How do I see my job as a health coach? I see that... Uh, there are these basic, 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 basic tools or behaviors that we need to do every day. In fact, that's what matters. What matters is the small things done every day as opposed to the occasional, sometime heroic action. And we know that what 
is measured gets done. Therefore, we need to try and measure our behaviors. So if we keep a journal or a diary, like I ate such and such, and it resulted in whatever result, is a very helpful thing to have. And having somebody to whom we are accountable for our behaviors, to whom we have to report, somebody, uh, a person other than yourself, because you know when when it's just you, you can kind of excuse it. But when you have to actually go and show the diary to another person, you're going to have to account for your behavior. So if we can get you to change your ways and do it for about 21 days, we will have established a new habit and it will change the trajectory of your life. It will change where things are headed. Um, you may remember long ago, there was coach John Wooden. He coached LA Lakers. He, um, he led them to eight, I think it was consecutive uh, victories of the NBA championship. And what he focused on were just the basics, hoop shots, layups, uh, long shots, whatever it is in basketball. And people practiced and practiced and practiced and they had it down cold. They didn't have to think. It was all muscle memory. That's what we're trying to head for, have the basics down and turn them into habits, turn it back into automatic behaviors. You don't even have to think about it. Anyway, I have several categories of things that need to be focused on, and uh, air is one of them. The air you breathe is either source of health or source of illness, because in the air there could be a lot of toxins. You would want to be in clean air that's rich in negative ions, because those are the healthy ones. And you will find those in forests and in parks. So I strongly encourage going there. And if you can't, get, a, get an air filter. Having an air filter in your home is a good thing, especially if you're living in a polluted environment. And if you're working in a shop, like automotive shop or whatever environment it is that's got a fairly, fairly high amount of toxins in the air, it's definitely a wonderful idea to get one of the air filters. We do sell such things. We have uh, professional grade air, air filters in our website. They're called Air Pura, and you can investigate. On the lower end are negative ion generators, and they are great because with a negative ion, you get the small dust particles out of the air as the, the indoor air is quite rich in positive ionization and you need to neutralize it. And when the negative ion generator puts the negative ions into the air, they collide with the positives and, uh, uh, and they help the uh, circulating particles to fall out of suspension or solution. They just drop out. Um, electrostatic filters on furnaces is a wonderful idea. I've listed a couple of products here. Uh, one of them is Ionic Silver. I use that every day these days. Well, not every day. I use it every time I feel I may have been exposed to uh, a viral or microbial um, contamination. So when I come home from an outing, I just squirt a couple of uh, squirts of ionic silver into the back of my throat and um, call it done. I don't have to worry about me being in an incubation phase now waiting for two weeks for some symptoms to appear because I know I have wiped it out right there, just on arrival when it was still little. And uh, reactive oxygen species that are coming in the product called Biohydrox. We sell it under the trade name as Amazing Soak. You can put that in your humidifier or a nebulizer and the, those uh, dispersed ions will sterilize the air or completely wipe out any microbes 
viruses, bacteria, all of that. The second most important input right after air is water. We need to understand the difference between hydration or cellular hydration and irrigation. Just because I drink doesn't mean that the water is getting inside my cells. Healthy water will be not contaminated by industrial pollution, will have low surface tension, negative ORP, that's oxidation reduction potential, will be slightly alkaline in the pH, and its clusters will be small. In nature, uh, spring water or creek water that's cascading down across rocks and all of that will be like that. A freshly condensed dew. Like for example, if you look on a, uh, on a uh, cold morning on surfaces like cars, like windshields or other, other flat surfaces, you will see condensing dew. That's nature's distilled water. There's humidity in the air and it will come out of suspension on cold surfaces. That's cold distillation without having to come to boil and steam and recondense. It just evaporates from the lakes and rivers and oceans, comes across as clouds, or just plain humidity and settles out. The city water, that's a different, different situation. We use chlorination as a means of killing off dangerous microbes. The problem with chlorine is that it kills microbes. So if you drink chlorinated water, you're going to be killing the microbes in your gut. That's a very undesirable. So I highly recommend that you drink water that's been dechlorinated. Even a simple countertop filter will do that. What's, you can remove more toxins using either RO, that's uh, reverse osmosis, or distillation. RO is wasteful in the fact that it spills probably five to eight times as much water as you get. Distilled is wasteful because it wastes a lot of heat, a lot of energy. What's missing there is that they are stripped of all minerals and they are not well structured. And we do have devices that help with the structured water. You can look it up on the Life Enthusiast website under the devices for water and food where we offer solutions that will reconstitute the correct relationships. What happens with water as it passes through pipes is uh, there's, there's laminar friction. And uh, that friction builds up electric charge and that electric charge raises, rises, raises the surface tension and the water is not nearly as absorbable as it needs to be. So we need to discharge that and we have devices to do that. Either vortexing or ceramics or crystals are needed to do that. It would be wise to eliminate chlorine before you shower in your water because when you use hot water, uh, in f 10 minutes of showering, it's like drinking a gallon of uh, chlorinated water. The chlorine evaporates, you absorb it through breathing, and you absorb it through your skin. So that's not very desirable. Fluoridation is super questionable. I, I think that the fluoridation idea should be reserved for only exceptions rather than everyday use. Chlorine, I already talked about, you don't want to be drinking chlorinated water because it'll wipe out the microbiome in your gut. And metal contamination, well, that has come up lately. Like Flint, Michigan was in the news not long ago with phenomenal lead contamination in the water. And and lead is very dangerous to human health. Great many cities, especially in the Northeast, built uh, in the 1850s to 1900s, have lead pipes. And so if the pH of the water isn't controlled, it will start dissolving the lead and putting it in the water. I'm, I'm quite sure that there's, 
there are many cities whose water supply is dangerous. We also have um, tools for treating water if you go out into the nature. Like you can drink creek water, but you need to worry about microbial contamination, Giardia and other. And for that, we have oxygen drops. You can find them in the website. So what's important? Lower the toxic load. Toxicity is always a, a problem. You need to watch the air, the water, and your food. Like you don't want to be eating contaminated food. But you may not be remembering that toxic toxins come into your body in all kinds of ways, like through your skin, for example, in cosmetics or cleaning products that uh, on their uh, or air fresheners my favorite thing to complain about volatile organic compounds are uh, complex molecules that may have a pleasant smell I mean not to me but to some people anyway th those things are actually quite toxic and your body is not uh, designed to uh, deal with it it's it's perfectly capable of dealing with the natural scent from lemon or orange or eucalyptus, but it's not able to deal with the uh, compounds created by the chemical industry. And of course, there's a lot of gassing off going on from furniture and packaging and uh, clothing, paints, um, you name it, all kinds of things around the home. You have a choice, right? In, in all of these situations, we all have a choice. At this point, I think I should mention the, uh, in the economy, the currency, the dollars are like oxygen in, in us. You can either offer it or withhold it. And things, you, you vote with your wallet all the time, right? Like when you pay for something, there was a vote. There was a vote for the manufacturer to make more of that. So if you are carefully choosing what you want to support, it won't take very long before the undesirable things are gone. They, they will wither and die. All we have to do is just convince each other, every one of us, to do the right thing. Electromagnetic pollution, we, we did a seminar on it recently, so I'm just going to mention it in passing, but the electromagnetic interference is causing disturbance at the cellular level and causing all kinds of stress load on the body. So less of it, or at least finding tools that mitigate that is really a smart thing. And what doesn't get talked about in the mainstream is that drugs, all prescription and over-the-counter drugs are actually toxic. They are toxins that block natural expression of the cellular function. And when they talk about side effects, they're not really side effects. They're effects. They're the toxic effects of having the use of the drugs. And some of them are more dangerous than others, like ACE inhibitors that are heavily prescribed for blood pressure management we are now finding that those are the ones that are causing the greatest danger to people who get infected by the coronavirus because it enters the body through the uh, ACE, that would be uh, angiotensin controlling enzyme pathway. So when you're on that drug, you have lowered your ability to resist. And the, my favorite is the statins. These are the cholesterol-lowering drugs. Cholesterol is a function of the body reacting to the foods we eat. If we eat the wrong foods, we will have high cholesterol. It's simple as that. You should be changing your inputs instead of trying to control it with drugs. And the last bit on this on this lot is the dust, the microparticulates. The uh, urban life living in cities 
you know, the brake pad and the tire dust as, as it wears, as it wears automobile exhaust, industrial exhalations, all of that. That all is adding to the toxic burden that your body has to deal with. The other really important basic thing that you have to look after is your gut health. I mean, you need to be building your microbiome. These days, it's not common to have a strong, vibrant micro microbiome because it's been affected. The things that affect it strongly are antibiotics, chlorine. Um, so if you drink or drank chlorinated water or if you had a run or two with antibiotics, you have distorted the microbiome and need to rebuild it. Um, and then cesarean section deliveries, they are or at least in the past, have limited the transference of the microbiome from the mother to the child. So we need to restore the proper function. We need to take probiotics. Those are the living microbes. And prebiotics. Those are the foods that these microbes live on. These are usually known as fructooligosaccharides or fibers, uh, insoluble fibers. Um, the other uh, things that are much needed in the digestive tract are humic and fulvic acid. Humic got its name from humus, as in dirt. It's the, it's the factor in the dirt that makes your gut work correctly. Like visualize a thousand years ago, somebody was trying to feed themselves, they would go into the garden, pull like, I don't know what, a carrot out, wipe it on their uh, clothing or something, maybe swish it in a creek. It would still have all kinds of soil-based microbes on the surface of that carrot as they ate it. These days that carrot has been washed, um, probably in chlorinated water, sprayed with diazinon and who knows what else. So we need to reintroduce the dirt back into the gut, otherwise it suffers. So humic and fulvic acid contributes to that. And with fiber, we increase the volume. Some studies suggest that our Stone Age ancestors ate about 100 grams of fiber a day. These days, the target is 35, and many people get only 10 or 15. And herbs, bitter foods, are really important because they help us stay healthy. Herbs and bitter foods. Remember those. If you're running into any problems, well, talk to the health coach. They'll, they'll know what to suggest. And lastly, things that wreck your gut health. The modern foods. Homogenized and pasteurized de Pasteurized dairy is really problematic. Pasteurized means that all of the microbes have been disabled and all the enzymes have been killed. So it becomes practically indigestible. And homogenized, that means that it's been run through a microscopic sieve, like tiny little uh, particles of fat that instead of being in larger globs, it's now in very tiny globs, tiny enough that they can pass through the protective barriers in your digestive system, which means they get into the bloodstream and your body's reacting to it with an inflammatory reaction. And gluten, well, the modern wheat, since about the 1970s, it has been hybridized in such a way that it uh, has more gluten. It's gone from 7% to about 13 And the wrong type has been accentuated, which now means that many people that used to be able to eat grains in the past can't do it now. What it does, it, it causes gaps in the... Uh, in the um, barrier that separates the sensitive inside from the hostile outside and under under digested bits of food are able to pass through this barrier the barrier becomes 
permeable. Permeable bowel or leaky gut. That's what this thing is causing. So many things, many people just can't do this. They have to stay away from modern grains. One other new thing since about 1995, 98, glyphosate or Roundup has been applied to our cereals as a means of drying them out, making them more consistent. And that, that has its own problems. The interface between the uh, hostile outside and the sterile sensitive inside of our bodies is protected by our skin and by our, by our hair and in the sensitive areas by the mucosal barrier. The mucosal barrier is somewhat permeable, more permeable than your skin. And it's the lining of your nose and into your lungs, into your mouth, through the stomach and the guts, and uh, through the kidneys and the urinary tract, and in the women also the uh, reproductive organs. And finally, the brain barrier, the blood-brain barrier. Brain needs to be protected from many many toxic inputs. So there's that's probably the tightest barrier we have, but still it can be breached. So the barrier has to be functioning correctly. It needs to be keeping toxic things out, but allow nutrition in. We exist uh, as the yin and yang, as the dynamic balance with the environment. We need to allow things to come in and toxins to come out, and we need to prevent the toxins or the other toxins to get in. <clears throat> so I already mentioned the gluten and the homogenized dairy that, that are causing the problems, causing the permeable bowel. Antibiotics and toxic chemicals make it worse. Iodine makes it better. Iodine, <laughs> the thyroid gland in other languages is called the shield gland, if you translate it. And the iodine is the element <clears throat> that provides your body the strength to defend itself. So if you're deficient in iodine, your shields are weak. Mucopolysaccharides is another one such thing. They are, uh, for example, in aloe vera or, or and other other uh, plants, and they are helping to defend the body, to to keep the barriers intact, strengthen them. Uh, the concept of zeta potential should be mentioned here. That's the ability to uh, resist the integrity, electrical integrity of the body. That which has the high zeta potential is able to resist the incoming fire or incoming harm. This shouldn't be underestimated. People with leaky barriers end up with all kinds of problems. Um, of course, all the viral infections get through the uh, weak barriers. Bacterial infections like Lyme disease is an example of it, or viral infections like um, herpes or others. So let's talk about what to eat. The comparison is organic foods versus industrial foods. I already mentioned the concept of voting with our wallets. Every time we spend our money, we're supporting somebody. So uh, when you uh, buy a toxic item, you have just told the manufacturer that they should make more for you. Here's what's important in food. Nutrient density. That, that has been going down. Like back in 1937, a congressional panel put out a report that said that 70% of mineral density has been lost by the year 1937, since they first started measuring it somewhere around 1890. Well, it's gotten much worse since. We're now finding that uh, genetically modified foods contain about 10% of the mineralization compared to organically grown foods. 
So when you're buying something that has been grown in a fertilized field, it may look right, but it's hollow on the inside, hollow in a chemical sense. You would need to eat five times or 10 times as much of it to get the same nutrients that are supposed to be there. And this is happening because of the depleted soil practices or the practices that deplete our soil. Industrial methods, you know, the fertilizer like NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, it drives the plants to grow fast, but they don't extract nutrients out of the soil. Biome destruction, um, talk about glyphosate or Roundup, that has been responsible for phenomenal destruction of the soil microbes, which is resulting in contaminated water, contaminated lakes. It's now in the aquifers. It's now raining contaminated water. Um, if you look at the map, you see that the entire Mississippi basin, the agricultural heart of America, is uh, draining down the Mississippi River and in the lower reaches of the Mississippi River, you'll find the greatest incidence of chronic illness, especially cancer. These practices are leading to desertification, loss of topsoil, the erosion of good soil. So who knows how long this is going to go, but it may come to the point where all of a sudden the, uh, the yields are diminishing dramatically and we'll be looking for solutions there. Enzymes are the function of life, or are the sparks of life. Like when there is an enzyme present, the food is able to be digested. When the enzyme is not present, your body has to manufacture it somehow. So uh, raw foods, are naturally still containing these enzymes. Once you preserve it, which means by cooking, steaming, pickling, these methods disable the enzymes. Pasteurization, right? Like when you buy yourself a bottle of healthy fruit juice, you check the label and you'll see, oh, it's been pasteurized. So the nutrients are there, but the enzymes are gone. And one last bit about food is factory farming of animals for meat. Um, when the animals are raised in tight quarters under a lot of stress, they live stressed lives. They, they evolve in, a, in an unhealthy manner. So by the time they're brought to harvest, when they're butchered and sold to us to eat, you're actually eating food that's from living flesh that's been stressed all their lives. There is a hormonal impact. Uh, you will probably notice it if you just allow yourself to eat the uh, healthier meats, the free-range chicken and the pastured beef or lamb or something like that, if you're going to eat it at all. So what's important is, of course, that we are mineralized. Our, our bodies are functioning in this chemical soup that, that we require. Well, um, what do we have here? The major minerals are the calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, Calcium and magnesium regulate the um, uh, sympathetic versus parasympathetic, the autonomic nervous system. Magnesium allows you to rest and repair and digest. Calcium, on the other hand, supports your stress side, fight, flight, get things done. Sodium and potassium are involved in energy exchanges. Um, potassium on the inside of the barrier, sodium on the outside, they, they are allowing the uh, cellular detoxification to function correctly. Other major minerals that are required, sulfur, phosphorus, iron, and chlorine, 
like for example, chlorine is required for uh, carbon and uh, oxygen exchanges. Like the CO2 is regulated by the chlorine chloride ion, Cl of Cl2. Iron's involved in the oxygen transport in your blood. Phosphorus is involved in almost every function. Sulfur in building of proteins. Then the, the trace, such as iodine, chromium, vanadium, manganese. Iodine helps, I mentioned already, with endocrine regulation and skin barriers or membranes. Chromium and vanadium are involved in carbohydrate uh, conversion of food into energy. Zinc and copper help to regulate the immune system and, and emotional health, like for example, zinc copper balance is involved in uh, um, ADHD or anger management. People with high copper tend to be very aggressive. People with high zinc tend to be very stoic. Molybdenum is required for protein assembly. Silica or silicon is required for uh, connective tissue. So if you don't have enough of that, your hair, skin, and nails will suffer. Your skin will be sagging and who knows what else. And then there's the trace minerals and ormus minerals. All of that needs to be on board too. That You cannot be eating foods that are deficient in these and thrive. So check with us on that. I started talking about enzyme, enzymes some. They are definitely a requirement. Like you can't not have sufficient enzymes. So if you're not eating fresh, raw, uncooked foods, you must supplement. Then you must supplement the digestive. In the digestive enzyme, you have amylase that digests carbohydrates, protease that digests proteins, lipase that digests fats, and there's more of them, of course. And the famous systemic ones, those that are dissolving uh, structures that need to be taken apart. Serapeptase deals with fibrin, that's the scarring and hardening of, of the body. So if you are suffering from injuries or just general hardening of the body, taking serapeptase is very helpful. Natokinase deals with blood and circulatory issues. So uh, the clotting of the blood and pre preventing that, natokinase is wonderful for that. <clears throat> and then there are others, right? Like lactase that digests milk, maltase digests malt, cellulase that digests cellulose. There are many others, I just put it as a sample. Anyway, the main point is this. Enzymes are disabled at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. When you heat things, foods above that, the en enzymes are destroyed. So pasteurization reliably takes care of that. Cooking as well, and pickling does it through chemical means. The last bit I want to talk about is how we rot and how we rust. Oxidation is rusting and reduction is rotting. And the currency in these exchanges is the electron. Uh, when you take away an electron, that's acidification, that's, that's the oxidation, a bit, oxidation bit. And donation of the electron, that's the alkalization or reduction. And we need to be balanced. We, again, I mentioned dynamic balance. It's, you know, a static balance would be a marble statue. It doesn't breathe. It doesn't take food. It doesn't move. It's just, it just is. Well, a living human has to exist in a dynamic balance. Ingest and eliminate. Inhale and exhale. Expand and contract. That's required. And the energy that's made for this is uh, made by mitochondria, which are little structures inside your cells that convert food into energy in presence of oxygen. And their efficiency is uh, going to reflect itself in how much energy you have to do anything.
Grounding is one of the best tools we have for resupplying the electrons into the body. So if you have a chance to walk barefoot on moist ground, like grass or a beach, that's great. But you may need to have a kick. Um, we, we sell a machine called Electron Charger. You may want to check into that. That's I can't talk about it in detail in this seminar, but it's well worth understanding why that is important and why you'd want to have it. But at the very least, ingest enough raw foods because the raw foods grow in the ground, right? So when they're in connection with the dirt, with the planet, they're taking in the uh, electron-rich ingredients. So when you eat it straight from the ground, you're ingesting the electron currency. Once it's cooked, they are lost. So that's, that's the review, right? We, uh, we offer you access to um, our health coach services. You can find it on this link. And uh, you can also hear me talk about various topics in greater depth on our podcast. So you can come to life-enthusiast.com, look up the podcast link and find the uh, 300 plus episodes of our podcast. Um, I would just like to encourage you to uh, review what we have just talked about, those nine points of all that's important, all of which you have to handle. If you don't handle all of it, you have a hole. It's, health is a lot like a team sport. You know, think of it like football. Um, if any one of the players, whether it's on the offensive team or the defensive team, if any one of the players is playing badly, that's the hole. That's where the opposition will probably find a way to defeat you. So you need to fix all of it. And if you have multiple problems, well, just pick one of these and work on that. And then, then return back to uh, fix the others. Um, you can contact us at life-enthusiast.com. The phone number is 866-543-3388.